welcome to another episode of the Philosophy Podcast. I am your host, Controversy, and to my right, ladies and gentlemen, my co-host, none other than Mr. Darren Love. <laughs> Stop 
stop mm. making the kind of way. You know, it's like once they invented the computer, they wanted to work on it, work on the software, get it, improve it. And today it's quite good, isn't it? You know what I mean? But yeah. you can imagine maybe in 10 years' time it's going to be even quicker. Yeah. And so is robots that talk to you and answer your questions. You know, they're going to work on that kind of technology. Mm. They, you know, that's, I think that's partly the purpose of man, really, to sort of get, get better. Yeah, to, yeah, to evolve. To improve. Yeah. Trying to sort of invent technology, basically, like the computer and all this kind of stuff. But the scary thing is, like you say, can we make machines that can sort of actually sort of evolve their own intelligence? That's the scary right. thing. And that's the scary thing. It's like they, you know, like the Terminator film, you know, I mean, I think that was made about 1980, I think, maybe, something like that. Yeah, 1980. Well, first one. <coughs> first one, yeah. And that was a bit like about all, about artificial yeah. intelligence, about mm. the future, basically. Yeah. Where the police, you know, are yeah. artificial intelligence, you know, and I can see this is where we're going to today in a funny way, you know. Yeah. And I think, like, they must have known back in the 80s that this is going to kind of happen mm. and um, I think like maybe within the next 50 years we're going to have robotic police on the, on, 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 on the roads basically on the streets yeah. sort of keeping an eye on us mm. because I feel like that's what they're working on now today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah definitely you know. Yeah. You know so I mean I was watching you watched it too this short film about this guy talking to this robot and it's very good wasn't it you know because yeah. I mean this got this if this robot didn't have a body it was just a talking head and this guy was asking questions and the robot had all the features in it mm. and it really looked quite real actually and it, it was asking um, answering all the questions very intelligent yeah very very intelligent you know and they they reckon they're going to get more advanced than what they are today. Yeah. Which amazes me, really. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's kind of a little bit scary because this this actual film that we watched, this, this robotic was very kind and very pleasant. Mm. And it's kind of like it was programmed to be kind. Yeah. And programmed to have manners and all this kind of stuff. Mm. But what if they programmed uh, a, a, a robot that doesn't have manners? Or but what... What what if right? Just being hyper, just obviously playing kind of devil's advocate here, as they would say, and being hypothetical. What if it hasn't been programmed to be kind and polite? What if it's been programmed so to, shoot, to, to kill? What what happened? No, what I'm gonna say is what if it's what happens if it's programmed so well that it's able to tell you what you want to hear. Rather than if you see what I mean, it's able to. It's so incredibly smart that it can lie essentially and yeah. tell you what you want to hear. Mm. But the reality could be a lot more sinister. Mm. So what if that is the case, where it is that that smart that it can it, it can it can know when and when and when it has to tell a lie in order to you know mm. prevent controversy essentially. I guess. It's interesting, isn't it? Though mm. we're we're living in very interesting times. Mm. But I think whether or not we like it, unfortunately, because of obviously the people who are in control of these things and run these things and these multi-billion-dollar, you know, tech companies and different people and you know companies and whatever else, um, they're working towards this. This is the goal, essentially. The goal is kind of like transhumanism that like we've talked about previously, you know, a few times in previous episodes, you know, a while ago. Um, I think the the goal is they want to you know somehow connect man with you know with machine essentially, you know. Well, I think we are today. Um, I think well, like the half the world. Mm, I mean, a lot of people are today. I feel, uh, jobless. You know, there's not many jobs about. You know, there there's a lot of office jobs. That's for sure. Whatever yeah. and things like that, acting and yeah, whatever you know. But there's just. A lot of people at home today, really, you know, and it's like the machines are doing the work for us, you know, like they're, they're making the beans now, you mm. know, it's like factories, yeah, like, oh, yeah, so, say, yeah. say uh, a factory that makes beans, whatever, yeah, and tins them all up, yeah, 
So in a factory today, I just feel like you need one person to press the button, another person maybe an engineer just in case something goes wrong, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's not so many people doing the jobs, do you yeah. know what I mean? And I feel like when they first start, you know, a long time ago, everyone was quite busy with their hands, do yeah. you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. now we're not so busy with our hands, we've got machines doing it for us in yeah. a kind of way. Yeah. And now we've invented silicon chip in the computer, the they're getting programmed these machines the right, yeah. right now, do you know what I mean? And mm. they're getting more advanced and more advanced, do you know what I mean? And mm. everyone's basically sort of like because I think like many generations ago there was many jobs about, you know, because they're you know, they want tractors about and yeah. like everyone had to sort of pick all the potatoes up by hand and things, you know, maybe horse and car and things. But there were a lot slower and there was a lot more people farming. Involved, yeah. There was a lot more farmers. Yeah. You know, I don't think there was just, you know, today there's so many different occupations that's on true, you know, but I think a long time ago, most people were farmers, you know, looking after sheep or cows or picking carrots and things, you know, but yeah. today there's a lot more different jobs. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, and um, as I say, like, we got machines, and even when you go shopping now, you know, you sort of like, you... You do it south, don't yeah. you? And all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, and you got to just for care about the checkout. Yeah, you know, and it, it's like those people are all going to get a push too. You know, you don't really need people in supermarkets. Anymore. As many, you don't need as many. Well, yeah, all you need is people stacking the shelves now and just basically cleaning <coughs> the place down again. If you saw me, yeah, you don't need so many people. You know, well, it, is, it essentially just eliminates salaries, paying people a salary mm. here. So those self-service checkouts might have eliminated two staff members. Yes. Essentially, and yeah. in today's day and age, on minimum, even on minimum, minimum wage today, you, that's you're looking about okay, two staff members. You're looking at about on minimum wage. You're looking at about maybe about forty five thousand a year. You've saved because both of them, yeah. are, both of them are probably on about twenty two thousand, twenty three thousand a year mm. on minimum wage. That's what it's roughly about. You see, I mean, it works out to about roughly a year. Um, so yeah, you know, um, yeah. I mean, it's not my, my mum, she used, she used to work at a place called BAT where they make cigarettes. Mm. And when she was very young, when she first started working there, she, she told me she used to sort of like work with about 100 girls and they used to make about a thousand cigarettes a day. Okay, yeah. But after sort of like a decade went past, they got these two machines, mm. one from Italy, and one from Germany. Okay. Okay, and they're both on the competition mm, again. Yeah. You know, who's got the best machine here, you know, but they both put these machines in the factory and they're both making a thousand cigarettes an hour. Yeah. And they sacked all those girls. I see, yeah. Uh, see what I mean? And those girls are out of job and they're making more cigarettes out of these machines. Than they never before. Than never mm, before. Mm. But at the end of the day, you know, you've got like, Really, smoking is not really good for you, is it? No, I mean, no, you know, it's not no. making something that's good for us, is it? No, like food and yeah. more important things, you know. Mm. What is smoking at, at the end of the day? You know, I mean, personally, I enjoy smoking. You know, um, yeah. I think there are certain people. It might sound funny to certain people, you know, but I think there are certain people that are just smokers. So if you get what I mean. Not saying that it's good or it's something that, like we said, we, even even if we're smokers, we don't. It's not something that we encourage or you know people should you know choose what they want to do and not be encouraged to do something because other people do it. If you see what I mean, if you choose to do something, it should be of your own accord, not based on you know peer pressure or someone else's opinion. If you see what I mean. Mm. Um, but at the end of the day, as we all know, these things are not that you know they're not that great for our health. You know, but I think also there are some people that are smokers, like you know. Um, well, I just, I, I personally smoke right now and again, mm. because, you know, when I'm doing a show I smoke, yeah, and sometimes in the evening I you feel know, whatever, mm. just, it just calms me down, yeah, and relaxes me in this, I feel like we're living in a very sort of like hectic world in a way, you know, quite a busy world, you know, it's a business world we're living in today, isn't it, That's where everyone's trying to fly about mm. and get on their way, you know, and um, try to earn a bit of money for out each day, you know, and that's that's mm. the whole purpose of life today, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Yeah, it's true. Um, we're like machines almost, don't we? Mm. Um, running machines, I think, as well. You know, I think a lot of people are running machines today mm. at work, 
Yeah. Wherever it's a car, that's a machine. Mm. It's kind of, um, you know. I mean, like talking about smoking, though, my mum worked at our in, our in, sorry, RNA research, that's it, I think. RNA it's, research. Or something like that, yeah. Mm. But it's just sort of searching whether to make cigarettes healthier for you and all this kind of stuff and they used to sort of check different flavours out and all this but they had these sort of like so I, I did sort of like visit the place once because my mum took me there you know and they had these kind of like robots in there where there were you know you put a cigarette in there and um, the, the computer they had computers there and eventually and all this mm. sort of um, giving us some sort of information you know about what the soap does for our health and all that yeah, I mean, like, the, like the side effects. It's kind of like artificial intelligence a little bit, you know. It's like yeah, quite interesting, you know. But mm. yeah, it, um, and that was you know I think that was about twenty years ago, in a kind of way, mm. maybe more than that actually. But yeah, is are we going to invent robots like you say? Yeah, that will actually take over us. Yeah. Like we're talking about programming these machines, these, you know, like that, that woman we're watching, you know, mm. the nobody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and um, she was making perfectly sense of what you were saying. She could hear you and she could see you apparently and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And apparently she was actually learning um, and getting more intelligent as, you know, as she was running. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very clever. Isn't it? Yeah. And even some software, that, like for instance, I use some software mm. um, with my film editing. Yeah. But I've got two programs, but one's a bit more complicated than the other. Mm. And it's got artificial intelligence. Art yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And it's um, where, say you you film something, like a bird flying in the sky. Yeah. You can cut that bird out just in one frame and then the, the computer kind of works out yeah. to cut all the rest of the frames, if, mm. if you saw what I mean. Mm. And it's sort of like, it's quite amazing how they make software that can think in advance in a kind of way like this, you know, and where it's going to go in the future, all this, you know. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. We've come a long way technologically, haven't we? You know, we've really advanced a long way. Well, know? I've seen it, you know. I mean, first of all, I saw the calculators come in. Mm. And I can remember them coming in when I was in the seniors at school. Yeah, yeah. So they were invented. And that's kind of like a mini computer, isn't it? Mm. You know, like the numbers. So I think they, they, I mean, even back then they had computers and they had the internet, but mm. they weren't giving it out to the public. No, of course not. Course yes. No, it was on trial. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there the government was testing it all basically, whatever. Mm. Um, I think a member of the public invented the internet or whatever. Yeah. No, sorry. I'm talking about the wireless internet. The internet oh, like Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Mm. Member of public discovered it. Yeah, yeah. And then you got to go, when, when you just sort of invent something or anything, all right, you got to go and give it to the Queen or something, you know. You know oh, you got, you, got patent. Patent, you got to patent it. That's right, yeah. yeah. So. But that's also to protect, that's also to protect your, yeah. your copyright, yeah. Your, yeah. your copyright infringement. Yeah, but in a way, what, what happens is, so you go with your invention to this place, you know, and what you say, you know, get it registered, whatever. Yeah. And they kind of own you a little bit as well, you know, they kind yeah. of get a percentage of what you're earning mm. in yeah. a funny way, you know. Mm. And that's where, you know, like I say, the wireless internet, I think a member of public actually discovered it, took it to the place, you know, to sort of show, show the discovery, but then the pub, um, the government steal it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. say, you, you're not giving this to the public yet, do you mm. know what I mean? You mm -hmm. know, because this is a fantastic idea, mm -hmm. and we're going to, you know. Yeah. And then they give it to the public when, when they're ready, if you saw them. Mm. Yeah. I think it's always been like that too, too though, mate. I think they they kind of slow drip technology to the public, if you see what I mean. 
Um, they got like, control on it. Yeah, it's like a slow, slow release. If you see what I mean, I think the technology that they probably have got made it so advanced that you know already that you know they have that they haven't shown us or. Well, they, I know that they've got supercomputers, haven't they? Today? Oh, of course, mate. You've got to do quantum mm. computing and stuff, mate, and that's talking. That's a whole nother level of you know that is mind blowing. Mm. Um, but yeah, artificial. If you, if, if you think about it, like. Everything today is almost artificial intelligence. It's like even people's phone. People talk like use Siri, like let's say iPhone, say for example. People will talk to their phone. If you see what I mean. Hey Siri, what day is it today? What's the date? The date today is. Mm. If you see what I mean. Mm. And you got all these other devices too. Like people got like the um, the Google whatever it is and the Alexa. Amazon released something called the Alexa mm. that plays music and just connects the internet and that type of shit. You talk to it. Tell it to turn on. Alexa, turn on. Yeah. Turns on. Yeah. If you see what I mean. Mm-hmm. You know, Alexa, do this. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So even that is artificial intelligence, if you see what I mean, on a basic level, on a basic on a basic form, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah. I mean even face recognition on on, on the computer is quite amazing, isn't it? And all that. And a lot of a lot of phones have got that today too as well. Even my wife, my wife my wife got that as well. She's got the, the um thumbprint. Mm. The thumbprint one, and then she's got the also the face, yeah. You've the got face. the eye one as well, you wear and yeah, and the eye one, you know. yeah, yeah, you are, and yeah, and the eye one. So, yeah, it's quite, yeah. quite incredible, really, how Advanced. well, how far we've actually got today. Mm. And I think, wow, you know, like in another decade time, where are we going to be then, you know? Yeah, we can't stop it, I feel. Yeah, who can stop it, you know, because like I say, we. It's like the computer, yeah. Uh, uh, in the last twenty years, I've seen them evolve. You know, so I, was, I mean, the first one I, I was working on twenty yeah. years ago, it only had was one gigabyte. Mm. And all this, you know, but that's nothing now. You know, it's like a, you laugh at that, and yeah. you know, it's quite funny mm. thinking about that. And I'm thinking, well, you know, in another decade, we're going to step up again somehow. Mm. You know, I don't know how. Yeah. But they're working on it every single day, though. If you think about it, mate, all these tech companies, whether it be in Silicon Valley in America or any of these places in, like, in Asia, mm-hmm. all these various different places, even in Africa today, mate, you've got a lot of young, you know, tech entrepreneurs, if you see what I mean, you know, building all sorts of stuff and coming up with all sorts of things, if you see what I mean, writing codes for different programs and all sorts of stuff, mate. It's mind-blowing. Like, young people today are really... Advanced, especially technologically, and yes. like we've talked about before, like even with my son and my daughter, they both, even you know, even my daughter being five years old, being able to operate a computer on a very basic level, to me is mind blowing. The fact that she can open the computer, turn it on, you know, scroll the mouse around to get to where she needs to go, you know, she'll click on the, the icon and go into the, you know, go into what she wants to go into and click on it and open it up, and you know, she can do that at five years old, and that was just, you know, she can literally start my computer up, go into it. Put the, you know, click go into my folder, click on the Netflix. They're the getting brought up with it, aren't they? Yeah. That's the thing. She'll yeah, put they're... the Netflix on, click on the kid's profile. She even knows the profile mm. to click on. Because it's a, an adult profile and a kid's profile, naturally. Mm. And she'll click on the kid's profile, look for what she wants to watch, put it on, you know? It's, it's a very, you know, I, I personally sort of wish, wish that I was kind of born today, you know, yeah. in this generation. Where they've got computers, or I wish that they were invented, you know, or there are. I mean, they did have computers actually when I was about fifteen. And they had the Commodore sixty four. Yeah. And it's uh, you know, a laugh thinking about that now. You know, and compared to what we got today, mm-hmm. it's gone like that. You know, like the, like when I first got the internet, it was really slow. Yeah. To connect. And the internet wasn't very good, really. Mm. You know, there weren't many sites then. You know, but like each day that goes by, and each year, people were just putting more, more information on it each day. Do you know what I mean? And it grows and grows, and it doesn't stop growing. The, you know, the internet. I don't think. You know, you just have to close it down. If you know, or mm. it's just going to grow like a tree. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, it's like. For instance, say something I read something ten years ago, yeah, 
which I have done, you know, on my Facebook, you know, I've written something, it's still there yeah. today. Yeah, it still exists, yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? It's quite a weird and funny way. Not lost in the ether. And you think, like, say, for instance, you know, we upload this to YouTube, yeah, and then a thousand years time, say, because time does go quite quick, we don't think of it, or a hundred years is nothing, do you know what I mean? But in a thousand years time, people be still watching it, you know, maybe uploading stuff still to YouTube, you know, and, the, you know, YouTube be, be, be huge by then. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? But if you think about how much data is uploaded to the internet every single day, yeah, whether it be social media, YouTube, yeah. whatever it is, whatever platform, think about how much information people put Onto the put from their computer onto the internet every single day around the globe, mm. every single day. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's it's amazing, it's, isn't it? Really. It's, it's, yeah. You know, I think you probably got how, how, for how how many years has this been going on? If you think about it, right? think about how much data that must be. Mm. How many years is it that the internet has been like it is today? Let's how many years has it been really like pro like good that we've been able to use it? You know, like we can use it today. It's been how many years? What ten years? It's been ten years, you would mm, say. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Where it's where it's been, people where it's, where it's a joy to use. Them, yeah, I mean, you, know. you can use it and it works quickly and it's it's fine. Good, you know, fast connection, good connection, etc. Now we've got phones that can get on them too, can't you? you know yeah. I mean? It's just quite incredible, really. You know, mm. It's all changed. You know, the world's completely changed to what it was twenty years ago, if you ask me. Yeah. In a yeah. big way. Mm. And it's quite quite interesting. You know, it's like. A long time ago, people used to get married, get go home, you know, and watch TV, watch a show, and might have a friend knock the door. But today, you know, you're getting texts and all kinds of things, you know, and it's a different, different kind of like reality we're living in, in a funny way. Yeah. Where <coughs> you, you know, your wife might be talking to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Whilst you're watching TV, mm. and the world wasn't like that a long time ago. You know, just kind of like a world. Because everyone, In a much every, better, every, we're kind of connected. Everyone's so accessible, aren't they? We're kind of connected. It's like people. The reality of it is like, okay, someone that might follow you on Facebook, you have, you don't know who they are, never spoken to them, never seen them, don't know them in real life. But they may follow you, and you might follow them because you like the content that they post, and they like your content. But the reality is, that because you each other follow each other, they could potentially call you. Yeah. That's how accessible we've become. Yeah. Where just through a simple follow, following each other on a social media program, you have the potential because there is an option on most social media programs today where you can call the person. It's like you know them, if you see what I mean, even though you know that, which is a little bit scary in a way. Um, but they can call you, if you see what I mean, and you might not even know them. You've never spoken to them in your life, and you would never call them, but all of a sudden, randomly, they've tried to call you. You see what I mean? You know, that does happen to people. So even relationships, you know, I mean, yeah. um, when I first met my ex-wife, mm -hmm. there wasn't no internet or nothing like that around, you know what I mean, and we just, just go to the cinema now and again or whatever. Yeah. But then when me and my wife divorced, yeah. and I met a girl from um, Bournemouth on the internet, mm -hmm. and I had a relationship with her on match.com. Yeah. And I had another relationship with a girl from Southampton. Then I met a girl from Dallas. Yeah. You know, she travelled 3,000 miles twice to come see me, you know. And uh, amazing. So we were talking on Facebook, you know, and she was liking what I was doing, you know. Yeah. We started talking. I said, why don't you come here? And she did. You know, yeah. And that was it, you know. And yeah. um, we had a very, very great time, you know. Mm. You know we're, we're good friends today, actually. I spoke to her the other day. Yeah. On Facebook. But, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, like, if the internet wasn't invented, that would not have happened. My life wouldn't have happened, you know, do you know I mean, I wouldn't have had the last three girlfriends. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm. And I don't think my wife would have divorced me either because she met somebody on the internet, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So this really changed the reality of the whole world, I think, you know. This this is my experience, you know. Mm. But I think, like, a lot of people